our Honorable Governor, Mr. Sridharan Pillai, Honorable Chief Minister, Dr. Pramod Savant, His Holiness, Shri Shri Sadguru Bao Brahmaraj, Mr. Movin Gudino, our Honorable Transport Minister, all the Honorable Ministers, Honorable Member of the Parliament, all our members of the Legislative Assembly, Lady Governor, Mrs. Pillai, fathers, sisters, and my dear friends. My first and foremost word is of deep appreciation and profound gratitude to our Honorable Governor for this initiative that he has taken to organize this function for felicitating me on my recent nomination as Cardinal. In fact, I was deeply touched to receive a few days ago a personal letter from our Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi. I am deeply touched by this gesture of our governor to felicitate me. In fact, I have accepted this nomination in a spirit of deep surrender to God's will and knowing that this nomination implies a greater responsibility of service. Service inspired by Jesus who chose to spend himself in the service of the people and who gave his disciples a touching example of humble service when he washed the feet of his disciples and he told them, I have given you an example so that you may do likewise. In the church, there are no honors, privileges, promotions. We are ordained priests. And by virtue of our ordination as priests, we are obliged to render service. And whatever happens afterwards, whether we become bishops, archbishops, cardinals, pope, we continue to remain priests. We continue our ministry of service, obviously with greater responsibility as cardinal I will have to exercise this responsibility as a close collaborator of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, at the universal level, also at the level of our continent. In fact, day after tomorrow, I have to go to Bangkok to participate in a conference of the Federation of Asian Bishops, all the bishops of all the countries of India. So this nomination means greater responsibility of Christ-like service, humble, selfless, caring service. We all belong to this country, and India has been known always as a lovely cradle of religions, cultures, languages, ethnicities, and we have all lived as one family of brothers and sisters belonging to the same country. I remember way back when I was studying in Rome, there were students from various countries of the world. And I had a good friend coming from former Yugoslavia. Now they've become, after that time it was one, but they're broken up into different republics, as you know, Slovenia, Croatia, Sarajevo, Serbia. He was from Sarajevo, he was my good friend. And whenever I went to his room, I saw on his, his name was Pero Pranic, and down he would put Sarajevo. And I used to ask him, Pero, why don't you put Yugoslavia? Why do you put Sarajevo? And he said, no, I will never put Sarajevo. I will, all, I will never put Yugoslavia, I will put Sarajevo. I realized those countries, those republics had been put together by Tito and they broke apart. But I was telling him, under my name, I will never put Goa, I will put India. We, all Indians, I think our, our first identity is Indians. 
We afterwards may be from MP, UP, Kerala, Goa, Tamil Nadu. I think we are Indians first. And I think this is what holds us together, that we are rooted in our Indian ethos. And as the governor was saying, India has been a country that welcomed all religions, all languages, all cultures. And we have celebrated our diversity, even in Goa. Though the Portuguese were here for centuries, we always remain Goans, whatever may be our language, our culture, our religion. And I think we shared in our festivals. And I think our Honorable Governor is experiencing this as he is visiting our villages, our churches, our temples, our mosques. And I think it's our common responsibility whether civil leaders, religious leaders, to work together to preserve this beautiful treasure that India has always been down centuries. The church, in whichever country it lives, it has contributed very specially in the field of education, healthcare, social service, and that's happened also in India for the last so many years in Goa. And we have collaborated with all the civil authorities, government authorities, and we have received the best of collaboration. I wish that we can continue to work together in a spirit of collaboration and serve our people, particularly those who are less resourceful and who are living on the margins of our society. I would not like to finish without saying one special word for the wonderful role that our governor Mr. Sridharan Pillai is playing in our state from the time he took over his responsibility as the governor of this beautiful state. He has reminded us that Kerala is God's own country. I'm sure you will agree that Goa also equally God's own country. I appreciate the initiative that he has taken to build bridges, to get to know our state. The very initiative, probably quite troublesome for him, is to visit our villages. He has been going around. We read it on the papers, villages. He has been trying to see our nature. Just now he was telling Mr. Morvin Gudino, there are some trees here, old trees, 200, 300 trees. So you can see the interest that he has in local ecology. And I also know that, that he has taken a praiseworthy initiative of reaching out to those who are in difficulties, those who have to take dialysis, those who are suffering from cancer. He has taken that beautiful initiative to reach out these people who sometimes have to face a lot of financial constraints. Mr. Governor, I thank you for the beautiful role you're playing to build bridges, to reach out to our people and to maintain the beautiful wealth of this state. May God bless you. May God bless our chief minister, our, all our ministers, Mr. Morvin and the other ministers, member of the parliament. I'm so happy that His Holiness Sri Sri Sadguru Bau Brahmaraj is with us. Goa has been a cradle of beautiful relations between followers of different religions. I wish and pray that all of us, hand in hand, can maintain this rich tradition of our country. Thank you. God bless you.